I think in all fairness, I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. Hey everybody, South Paul Chris here. This video is on some more of my leather products that I make. That's the great thing about YouTube, right? Is for everyone to share interests and, you know, things about themselves with all of you guys out there. So hopefully uh, some of the things I show you guys will inspire you and give you guys idea for uh, some projects that you guys can do. All right, here we go. This is just one of the tinder pouches that I make. Uh, I think I made about three or four. This is kind of a smaller one. Kind of simple, made this out of suede. Nice toggle closure. All right, here's another one. This is just with a lighter suede color. Great tinder pouches, or for whatever else you want to put in there. Now this one here has been my main tinder pouch that I've been using personally. Nice little dangler to clip on your belt. And those are line 24 snaps. And again, this is suede too. Um, this one I just kind of heavily waxed with beeswax and some other conditioners. See in there, plenty of room. Whatever you need to go in there. Like I said, I, I primarily use this just for tinder. And that wax finish just gives it a slight uh, water resistance. Alright, so those are tinder pouches. Now this, uh, I'm actually not quite sure what this could be. I originally made this to be just like a pocket uh, fixed blade sheath. So I did put a welt in this, so this this technically can work for a fixed blade. As you can see, this is one of my earlier projects, so I was still doing just a back stitch on this, but nonetheless, it's still effective. And this is just a lanyard to wear around your neck. See, there are two stainless steel eyelets in the back, hand riveted. Dyed this black and gave this also a um, an acrylic finish. I believe I showed this to you guys already in my other video. This is just a pocket sheath. <clears throat> Two line 24 snaps on the back for a quick detached belt loop. stainless steel eyelet and of course that holds the boker epicenter I'll get more into this knife in another video I briefly discussed it in another one but yeah that's the boker epicenter This is a flashlight case for my Phoenix 25. <clears throat> this pouch case is pretty versatile too. This can also hold a large folding knife.
This is made out of 9 ounce leather. Showed you guys the Swiss Tech in my EDC video. Very simple design, no welt, just a friction little pocket sheath. This is just a simple belt I made. Dyed this in a saddle tan color. You can see I burnished all along the edges. Try to seal those ends. Keep dirt and water out. <clears throat> and this is a little pocket sheath, belt sheath for uh, my Falk, Falk and even you too, which I also showed in the earlier EDC video. Nice little thumbprint on there. It's alright, I don't mind getting my knives dirty. I, I use all of them, so I really don't have any safe queens. I do use, I would say I use 95% of my knives. So that's the pocket sheath for the Falcon Even U2. This is one of my fire kit pouches. I made this out of calf skin. I'm not really going to open this up because that would just make this video way too long. I'll, I'll shoot another vid on on my fire kits in in the future nice thick leather thong there with the horn closure yeah this is one of my favorite fire kit pouches Now this is one of my earlier projects, but nonetheless still one of my favorites. This is a neck sheath for the Becker Necker 1095 high carbon steel. I did do the mod with the micarta handles. I also stripped the blade and gave that a patina. This knife is like Napoleon. It may be short in stature, but puts in work. I made many of feather sticks and baton little pieces of wood with this knife. Very small, but very, very sturdy.
nice little fire steel holder on the front drain hole still one of my earlier projects where I use just a simple back stitch I shouldn't say simple but simpler than other attempts <clears throat> Yeah, this is still one of my favorites. This is a friction sheath for my Zero Tolerance 801. Again, you guys will be seeing this in a lot of videos. For obvious reasons. Now I did wet mold. This was actually one of my earlier uh, attempts at wet molding. Didn't turn out too bad. Again, even though this is one of my earlier projects, it's still one of my favorites. I actually lined this sheath with some pigskin in there. A bit dirty because I've had this for a few years but yeah still one of my favorites alright what else do we have oh Now this is the journal that I usually keep in my uh, primitive pack. I just feel that this kind of goes better with that that kit that I have. I believe I made this out of five ounce leather. there. I haven't really used this journal too much but I plan to. Alright. This thing <laughs> it's kind of frustrating but uh yeah, the fit and finish in this sheath, I really loved. Um, I actually made this for a karambit, but it didn't fit. And that was just due to poor planning and whatnot, but, you know, I guess you learn a little bit from your mistakes. But I just keep it around just to remind me that fit and finish is possible. See, yeah, kind of an odd shape. Here's another karambit sheath that I made. Two brass Chicago screws on the back. Double stitched all the way around. Now this big guy, this is a sheath for my RAT7, which I currently have in one of my packs. But this sheath was, I believe this was the first sheath that I actually did a saddle stitch in. And I did two rows in the welt just be 
because the knife is so big. But you can see how wonky that line is. <laughs> but nonetheless, learn from your mistakes, right? Dangler. Yeah, it's another one of my favorites. <clears throat> This is a belt sheath for the Leatherman Sidekick. Wet molded, acrylic finish. Showed you guys a knife roll. And I'll just show you again. Another one of my fire kits. This uh, houses my Hudson Bay tobacco tin and my flint and steel. Um, we'll be doing a video on this separately just for the contents that are in it. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite fire kits right here. <clears throat> this is, uh, this is just a key fob, which has a couple of uses. You can use it for your keys, or you can just take this uh, D-ring off and use it as a dangler for a knife system. Nice and thick, I use 9 ounce leather on this one. With two line 20 snaps. Here's a four card wallet, minimalist wallet. Currently I am EDC in this, so you can see there is some wear. This is made with four ounce leather. I dyed it dark brown, saddle stitched. And I heavily waxed and oiled this as well. So this one fits about two cards on each side comfortably. Or sometimes I'll just put cards on one side and I'll uh, fold cash in half and just keep on this side too. But yeah, a, a nice lightweight minimalist option. <clears throat> Here's the pocket sheath that I showed in my EDC video. Dyed black. Neck lanyard hole there. Drain hole there. Paramilitary too. Yeah, another one of my favorites.
Here's another key fob. This one's out of a thinner black leather. But I still use line 20 snaps on this. The same type of D-ring. I currently EDC, EDC this as well. And this is probably one of my favorite sheets that I've made. Not one of the biggest, not one of the prettiest, that, you know, but very sturdy. Saddle tan color, double stitch, saddle stitch, integrated belt loop. And this holds the DPX Hest, Robert Young Pelton Woodsman Blade. Again, I will be doing a review on this knife as well. One of my favorites. Made in Italy with the collaboration between Robert Young Pelton and Line Steel Knives. Very sharp, nice little bottle opener there, in case you need to crack a brew while you're in the woods. Not really on my priority list, but nonetheless, good to know. And this is made with 9 ounce leather as well. That's Kitty in the background, meowing. Here is an iPad case. Now this has a phone holder on the front as well. Now this will hold just about any size tablet. I did make it uh, basically to fit any tablet. Here's a couple axe sheaths that I made. Uh, this axe sheath fits the Cold Steel Trail Boss, which this is my personal axe. One of them, anyway. Great Woods Axe. Nice mid size. 1055 high carbon steel. I did give this a patina as you can see all the etching around. Again use mustard and vinegar. Same as I did on the, the Becker. Also sanded down the original handle. Scraped off all that varnish and then I re-stained re it. Genuine Hickory. And last but not least, 
as showed in my Walking Dead video. This is the Trogan T-Hawk by CRKT. This is the Tomahawk that I currently use when I go into the woods. Ten fifty five high carbon steel. This is made by RMJ, collaboration with CRKT. And same with the Trail Boss. I re sanded all the varnish off and re stained it and resealed it with uh, teak oil. So that is a CRKT Chogan's Hawk. We'll be doing a video on this as well, so look for that in the future. Belt loop. And you have two options whether you can just slide it on your belt that way or you can unbutton the line 24 snaps. Alright guys, that about does it. 